Hi! So it's me again, back to make another higher quality video. Not quite high, just kind of... <laughs> anyway, um, I wanted to come on and talk a little bit, talk a little bit of shit actually, about um, a book. If you remember, back in, according to my computer, January 24th, I posted a bonus episode titled John Grisham Dayum. <laughs> and it was about this book. I, God, I hope this doesn't turn out backwards. Uh, John Grisham, The Innocent Man, which is um, John Grisham's only nonfiction work. It's a great book. And I wanted to talk about it and also how I kind of thought John Grisham was a babe. And then like two weeks later, the guy releases a statement that was like really sympathetic towards pedophiles. John Grisham, what's wrong with you? <laughs> anyway, um, he used as a sort of foundation for his book, this book called The Dreams of Ada by Robert Mayer. And in that um, bonus episode, I talked about how this book was going to be my next read and I would talk about it and do a bonus episode on it. And I mean, that was back in January. And of course, now you realize I never did an episode on it. And that was because this, this is not a good book. And I don't like to say that I am someone, um, I just posted another bonus episode where I talked about, you know, I had three blurb solicitations this last week from fellow authors and I don't mind doing that. I don't, I, I like to give blurbs and it's probably good to ask me for them because I like everything. I'm easy to please. I really am. So it's rare for me to say I don't like a book. And even when I don't like a book, I don't really like to come out in public and say so. Uh, I feel that as a writer myself, it's not my place to kind of shit on other authors. I don't want to do that. And you know, this it's not that this book, have you ever read a book where you felt like it was just a big fat waste of your time? You got to a point where you were just finishing it out of spite because it just wasn't working for you. I, I've had that happen. That wasn't the case for this book at all. I, you know, it was, I, I was able to get through it without you know, angrily grumbling at it every time I opened it. But um, I want to talk about why it wasn't good. Now, disclaimer, you know, I am not a voice of authority on writing. I am a writer, but I am a writer who is still learning. I still have quirks that I'm trying to get over and I'm still trying to better myself. I in no way feel that I have any place to lecture or um, try to give advice to anybody because it, that's not me. I, I don't feel that I have the right to do that. So I don't. But in this case, I actually have a bit of experience with research and doing stuff like that. Um, I, I am a college dropout. There's no point in trying to soften that one. I was one of the first people in my family to go to college and I went for four years and had to drop out for financial reasons. And the real bitch of it is, is I was 18 credits short of my degree. And I've tried going back in subsequent years, you know, after my children were born, I thought I've got a little bit of time, maybe, you know, get it done in three years on a part-time basis. And I, I can't afford it, which sucks that it has to be that expensive. It would be nice to have that completion, but whatever. But when I was in college, um, I went for three years to the School of Journalism at WVU. So I know journalism. And then I did a more, um, it, it would have been a Bachelor's of Arts that I would have gotten. And I did a lot of um, creative writing and a lot of research papers. There was a lot, lot, lot of research that I did in college. And so I know about research. Now, when, when we're talking about me, this is something that I still do as a writer and a podcaster. Every book that I've written, I mean, oh, there's a piece of fuzz flying around. Oh my God, I'm being, I'm being haunted. Okay, I think it's gone. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry.
sorry, I'm so stupid. So I write pulp fiction. I'm not writing deeply thought-provoking works. I'm writing this kind of, you know, pulpy stuff that's more to be entertaining. That's what I want to do. But every book that I've written, every short story that I've written has required varying degrees of research. I love research. It's one of my favorite things ever. Uh, in the podcast, uh, even the main episodes, they don't even reach 20 minutes. I think this last episode reached 20 minutes, but that's because I have an ad in there. Um, th those are very short episodes. I keep them short on purpose because sometimes I'm talking about books that can be a little laborious to read, a little laborious to get through. You know, the point is, is just to get rid of any sort of mysticism or bias around those books. The point of the podcast is they're just books. So I keep the episodes short. But for those short episodes, those little, at most 20 minute episodes, that's four to six hours of research on my part. Um, I'm not just reading Wikipedia. I'm not just um, going and reading excerpts and stuff. I, I'm doing the research. I go down rabbit holes. I do deep dives on other things. So this is the problem with this book, okay? Knowing that, you know, I've written many, uh, not scholastic papers, but college level research papers where, you know, footnotes and citations are needed. That's thankfully something I don't have to do too much anymore. When you are doing research, you gather it all. You get all the research you can get. You want a damn mountain of research. That's the easy part. That part of research is anybody can do it. The artistry and the skill comes in at culling that research, at narrowing it down. Because even in a research paper that you're just writing for your college professor, you are still telling a story. And there are some pieces of that information, although pertinent to your topic, is not pertinent to your story. Do you understand? It's not all going to fit in the story that you are trying to form in your paper. Nobody told this guy that. Okay. Uh, this book is an info dump. The problem with that being, again, it's long anyway. Can you see how thick that is? It's not the longest book ever. I mean, sure, I read longer all the time. But there are so many like police reports and psych evaluations, things that, you know, when you're writing something that you want to be accessible to an everyman, should not have made it in here. This was a, a book where, I mean, there are entire courtroom transcriptions in this thing. Now, I will say that Robert Mayer is a good writer. His uh, prose, is very easy to read, it's very easy to get through. The problem with this is I don't, I think this may have been new to him, this kind of um, true crime book. And it probably would have been better had he worked with a more seasoned nonfiction writer so that they would have been better at picking through the information to add. I mean, John Grisham has no problem with that. John Grisham, He's a lawyer, he's a politician, but he is a writer and he knows what needs to go in to tell the story and what doesn't need to be in there. It would just be a bunch of um, extra garbage and you get a lot of extra garbage in this book. So that's why I didn't want to talk about it on the podcast. That's why it didn't get its own um, episode the way The Innocent Man by John Grisham did. But also, if you want to know the story, this one was written years before John Grisham's. And John Grisham's book has um, updates. Uh, things have happened, have cons transpired in John Grisham's book that don't happen in The Dreams of Ada. So, I mean, honestly, if you want to know about what happens in this, uh, I think it's Oklahoma, Oklahoma town. Am I gonna, I can't see it really fast. It's not telling me. Oklahoma. Yeah, Ada, Oklahoma. <laughs> it, I, I would read John Grisham's book. It, it was a good point of reference 
to read The Dreams of Ada because John Grisham read it before he started his book. But as someone who's looking to read for entertainment, it wasn't a great book. And it was 100% because of the info dump aspect. Again, not a voice of authority. Take my words with a grain of salt. I whatever. But as a reader, and as someone who has experience with research, and kind of narrowing down what's necessary to tell the story. I think um, having a co writer would have been a good idea. But John May Robert Mayer wrote a lot of books. Uh, he seemed to like kind of military bent stuff. So check him out. I mean, look at his stuff. I just th this was too much. This was just way, way, way too much research material thrown into the book when it should have been uh, separated into keep and do not keep piles, if you know what I mean. So that's that. Um, I just wanted to do a quick video because I said I would. I should be doing more of these. I've got this really bright light set up now. Oh God, if you look right at it, it blinds you. It's terrible. Um, so I will post this and please, as always, feel free to comment or don't. Uh, it's a lot of crickets. It's just a lot of me talking to myself over here on Patreon and YouTube, but who cares? I keep these unlisted for a reason. If you don't have the link to the video, you will not find it. So yeah, maybe I am just doing this to entertain myself. How am I doing? Okay. <laughs> Bye.